very good morning to all and uh, today is uh, saturday and uh, i know that it is not easy for each of you today and uh, normally on the weekends everybody love to sleep till 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock and uh, um, i can see that each one of you are very eagerly looking for what is going to be the topic for the day and i really appreciate each one of you to get up early and uh, sit in front of your computer and get connected to the link today and uh, um, I am waiting for more and more people to listen today and I am already seeing lots and lots of students are joined today and uh, almost 100 plus students are already in the call today and uh, I welcome each one of you for this uh, webinar and this is my uh, this is the third module and uh, basically uh, started from the manufacturing then into the lean manufacturing and uh, now we are getting into deeper into the lean manufacturing principles and uh, before we get into lean and uh, today the topic which i'm going to talk is basically about uh, the five years which is a very very important topic and uh, uh, i i can understand that okay many of you know about this subject to a certain level but in spite of that, I strongly believe on all basics in the manufacturing. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take you to, through a couple of, to, uh, uh, say a set of slides today, and it will I'll go step by step into the uh, every step of uh, the five years, and uh, basically um, let uh, come back to the slides before coming back to the slides, and uh, I'm sure that most of you. Would have learned this maybe at your home or maybe at your uh, say through the theoretical book where you learned about what is fires and uh, and I can say that especially at home uh, if you talk to your uh, parents your mother must be very very good in looking at this fires fires is what we normally call it as an housekeeping right that is what we keep it right how to keep the house clean and neat so that it will help in every aspects of the house. That is what the, every mother at home normally looks at it. You can speak to your mother maybe once you, after the session and she must be telling or you can see in the house how she is able to maintain the entire house, speak and span every time to give a wonderful, uh, say, a look and giving a wonderful environment to each and every one of you in the family, right? So that is what happens at home and uh, there it starts the entire five years there. That's what I look at it because I personally uh, look at uh, my home every time has to be neat and clean and spick and span and uh, so that it will help me to give a feel about the environment where I stay and it will help me in many aspects of the home, right? That is what I look at it, right? So. Um, welcome all to the session again one more time and uh, let me take you through the say the presentation where I'm just going to start speaking about the details of what is fires and keep moving on it right just give me a minute so that I can open the screen Good. <clears throat> so everybody must be wondering, maybe looking at the flyer also, you must be thinking about what is this lean fires, right? So it is a set of principle which is basically uh, it is derived from uh, from Japanese uh, way when Toyota started, and Japanese people has uh, said this uh, first thing to before they get into the lean uh, the Toyota way of production. They always talks about this fires in Japanese. So 
that is what it, we called as a five year step right so in japanese uh, in japan the people in Toyota uh, motors they used to follow these steps before they set the place for the lean right so this is actually a pre-request for the lean i can say right and uh, if you look at it the but it talks about five steps one is called the saw and the second one is called the set in order and the third one is called the shine and fourth one is called the standardizer and fifth one is how to sustain all the four that is the way this five years principle has been taught right by looking at it it is actually very simple and uh, but it requires a lot of discipline to practice it right and it is not easy to practice also right so unless uh, the person who is really thinking about yes i want to make my lean journey very very attractive and i want to make my lean journey very uh, let's say the biggest shift in the entire industry that is where this thinking will happen on the fires right because this is a mandatory prerequisite for any industry where they want to work on the lean principles right so when, we, when I look at a, a factory, when I get into any factory in my experience, I personally look at and diagnose a company, right? First is by looking at the place, looking at the entrance, looking at the, uh, say the campus, looking into the buildings, looking into the entire shop floor and the entire office place, I can able to diagnose the company is a great company or it is an ordinary company, right? So by looking at the place itself, it is very easy to look at it because that is where the five years plays a bigger role. So Japanese actually believed on this principle very strong. That is the only reason they are able to bring change in their Toyota principles and later it is called lean manufacturing principle. That's what we talked about it. And uh, five years is first right there is no total quality management there is no total preventive maintenance or lean without five years that is the starting point in the entire journey there right so so as we talked about in the first slide it talks about one is basically sorting out right how to sort out and second s is basically it talks about how to set limits and systemize it. And the third S talks about how to shine the equipment. And fourth S talks about how to avoid search and time elimination, basically to avoid any delays in the workplace. And fifth one is, it talks about how to practice the four, first four, one, two, three, four years as a standard and practice and discipline. It is the basic, the entire following the all the four steps every time how to do that. That is the fifth year it talks about, right? So basically five years improvement in any company actually is basically a discipline ourselves and uh, doing audits on a daily basis. And when you do audits, you will make some observations and when you make some observations, then you have to work on the action plan, especially with respect to any non-conformance they tell it, right? So whenever I find that something has to be like this, and if it is not like that, it is a non-conformance, right? And uh, next one is basically the abnormality, any abnormality in the place. And the other one is the any deviation because something has been set in the beginning, but that is not followed, right? So it is a deviation. And any discre discrepancies basically, normally some discrepancies happen on any shop floor because in most of the shop floor, everything will not be so perfect except the Japanese is able to practice for many years. And in the later organization in India, I can talk about companies like TVS are very good in five years. And there are companies and all multinational companies, especially the auto industries of Ford or uh, Mahindra's or uh, General Motors or any companies you take it there, they have a wonderful way of maintaining the place, right? So that is the way the entire fires is driven, right? So 
basically it talks about why five years is required. It. That is what we talk about it, and uh, that is what we talk uh, more about. Right, uh, the entire part. Right, so. So what is the first test? The first test is basically to sort out, right? So when you go to a place at our home also, you can see there are so many things in one place, right? And the first goal is in the first uh, yes is what? How to sort out the place, right? Arrange the place in such a way that making sure that all the, let's say in a, in a bookshelf, how to arrange the books, right? or in your desk table where you read how to arrange the desk table especially uh, where you have to keep the stationeries where you have to keep all your books where you have to keep your pen and uh, everything has to be arranged right so we basically to sort out the place that's the first thing we talk about it right and when in any shop floor environment it is basically it's we talk about how to keep the place dry because in shop floor especially on shop floor any place which is there on shop floor most of them there can be a water or there can be an oil on the shop floor so when we talk about sorting out is basically to make sure that the tables floors everything is should be dry that is the first thinking we keep it right and uh, when you talk about in machines there should not be any swart right because when you do turning uh, or in the, the turning centers or whether it is milling centers, we have a lot of salt will come, water will fall out and oil will fall out, coolant will fall out, right? So it is basically to make sure that avoid all the wet places anywhere in the shop floor, right? And uh, uh, we want to remove all unwanted items from that place, which is basically uh, through a process called red tag area. I will show you an example there, how red tag will be done. So from that place, what is really needed, it has to be there. What is not needed, it has to be taken out and it has to put a red tag and it has to be moved to a place, a right? different place, right? And uh, basically why we have to do cleaning? Because when you do cleaning, we will do an inspection. That is the purpose of cleaning, right? When you do a cleaning, the purpose is to make sure that I'm inspecting and checking it, right? That is the purpose of cleaning, right? So basically sorting out will help out basically in in terms of if you look at it in the shop floor so if there is a lot of parts available at one place it is basically to avoid the mix up of parts in the shop floor there right and uh, when you put it on the pallets then pallets has to be properly arranged right so those are the examples we can talk about it and uh, the basically we should not have parts touching each other or conference teaching other on the shop floor because that actually will not help in the manufacturing flow because it will make more complication to pick up the parts or kick out the parts or handle the parts that's where the complication comes right when you come to the office side uh, if you look at it the especially on the filing racks the filing racks has to be properly kept because it has to be properly numbered it has to be properly arranged and there should be a gap so that the retrievability should be easy. That is the way the sorting out happens on the uh, office side. And uh, these are some of the things when you talk about uh, on the sorting out, right? So this is a very good example, visual example. You can see that how the floor is kept there. This entire shop floor is neat, clean. There is no wet space on the shop floor. Everything is dry. Basically, it will. That is a wonderful example of this uh, photograph. If you look at it. And you can see that. And when you look at, as I was talking about, at the entrance of the factory or inside the campus of the factory, there should not be any wet area maximum, right? So make make sure that it is dry on the uh, on the roads. And the road should be neat and clean. Should be properly maintained. That is a very good example if you look at it. Even when you go to a canteen, when you make where the food preparation is happening, there it has to be sorted out properly. It should be neat, clean always the floor is maintained so this is one of the examples where i picked up a photo from one of the tvs organization they practice their cooking area right the canteen area right so that is where you can see that you can see a big shift in the way of cutting right so when i was talking about red tag uh, thing that when you work uh, started doing a first test in your area you look at what is required in that area 
what is not required so required things you keep it in the same area non wanted things what you are what normally in the pious practice workshop what uh, um, i learned and i practiced it many years is make a red tag and this is the red tag normally available in any shop floor manufacturing shop floor who are following a pious principles very strongly so this red tag will be attached to that unwanted thing and it will be moved to a area where it is isolated it is called the red tag area where it will be kept for decision making that is the purpose of isolating that right so this is the way after red tag it is the, the all the unwanted things will be moved and this is one example you can see on the slide it is called the designated area for red tag where it is kept for taking a decision whether it has to be required or not required by the team right so that is where it happens there right so this is one good example how to keep the machines clean make things easy to clean and how to rearrange the entire machine in such a way that it should be easy to operate on a daily basis you can see that there is so much of congestion happened on if you look at it on the here there are so much of wires and everything so it has been re designed and realigned in such a way that people can access the places very easily otherwise it become very difficult to handle it so that is one example it is showed here on this slide okay on this example if you look at it this area is completely opaque right so when the machine operation is happening it is not easy to see what is happening there right so this is one good example how can we make it transparent one right so that will help out on the machining to sort out right basically why it is making things to see easily that is the purpose of sorting out also in terms of the shop floor there right so this is one example you can see on the slide okay this is on the office side where the files are properly arranged and kept it and retrieving the file become very easy to uh, work faster because otherwise most of the time when we are not arranged the files we have to search and we have to identify it and today's world everything is digitalized right this is a basically on the day uh, japanese started and it is followed for many 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 years in many industries and today uh, files are used only for the statutory part rest of them everything is on the computer today right so in in computer also whether it is a desktop or laptop we have to arrange the things properly that is a very important purpose it is required right so we have to arrange the things properly so that it will help to retrieve it faster we know very well whether in and the file in the computer on your uh, desktop or whether it in your uh, drive everything has to be arranged in a way so that retrieving become very easy there right and uh, so that is about the first years right so uh, what normal practice happens on any shop floor is this can be done like a workshop i did many workshops on five years in the shop floor in my career to set an example to the people how to keep the place right and how to uh extend from one place to next place to next place in the entire shop floor so that the model place first can be created and the rest of the place can just duplicate what they did in one place and it can spread across the entire shop floor and uh, if you look at it in in a in a, in a when i say we have to start uh, from scratch then in any shop floor which is not in play good in fires it it takes the size of the shop floor into the smaller shop floor we can transform the shop floor in a week and if it is a medium sized shop floor it may take a month and if it is a very big shop floor it may take three months to set the fires principles on the shop floor right so the second is is basically we have to set the limits and systemize it right so why we have to set the limits because now we sorted out everything what is required and what is not required right the next step is what how to set the limits how to systemize if it is there there in that place how to keep it place for everything right if it is to be there at this it should be there only it is something like when you enter the house we always leave the chapels outside right? so we have a shoe rack there right so we have to set the system there we have to set the limits there right that is what we do right and there is a, if you go into the house you can see a, a place for god there is a separate place there is a place for kitchen right i can't do cooking at uh, bedroom right so i can't do cooking in the living room right so i can't keep the chapels inside my place where i have a god 
That is not the way to do it. Right? So how to set the place? That is what it talks about on the shop floor also. A place for everything and uh, every useful thing has a place, right? So it's just basically what these are the things which will help you to optimize and achieve best in quality and cost and delivery on the shop floor, right? So uh, basically it, uh, in the places where we create some visual controls that will help you to systemize it, right? It is something like I can show the examples there where we need to come to the photograph there, right? Easy to observe and take corrective and preventive action. That is what the way when you after the sorting out, you have to make sure that you have to keep the things at the place where it has to be. That is the purpose of this thing, right? So these are some of the examples, right? Like a gangway marking in the shop floor is one of the examples for how to set a limit and how to systemize it, right? And when you talk about on the shop floor, when there are containers, right, where we have containers where you should have a dedicated container. I'll show the photograph also in the further slides. So it is basically too easily to identify it and easy to trace it also, right? And uh, containers should have separators also, partitions and where uh, one component doesn't touch each other because it will help you to retrieve the parts easily, which will be part of the lean principles, right? That is what the fires will help on this thing, right? And uh, if you look at it, the next part we talk about is the uh, Prefixed number of parts per container, right? If a container requires only 25 parts in that, it should be 25 only. It should not be 26, it should not be 30, it should not be 50, right? Because these are the pre-requests for the lean. When you follow all this, doing the lean printer, following a lean principle, working on the lean become much, much easier, which will actually help to eliminate all the non-valid activities in the entire shop world, right? And uh, Prefixed location in the shop floor, especially on tools or fixtures or cages. That is the other way of making the setting a limit and systemize it, right? So if you look at it, this is the one example where we talked about the gangway marking. If you look at it here and you can see the entire gangway is properly marked, the gangway is properly marked, and the working area is properly marked, right? Working area, if you look at it, is green. And the gangway it has got a different color so it is properly marked that is what the limit set and systemize it on the shop floor and uh, i was talking about the dedicated containers if you look at it these are some motors for a particular factory where it is arranged in your dedicated container right so there is a dedicated on the bottom and top so the quantities are fixed you can't increase the quantity here right so this is one of the ways to limit and systemize it and when you look at the toolbox and somebody works on the machine, right, as a maintenance person, they can't keep the tools like this, right? So it is not possible to retrieve the things when you are working on the machine because the more the time the machine is down, it is a loss for the company in a very, very big way, right? So for a maintenance person or somebody working on the machine, this is very, very important, right? So the person has to use the tools in such a way that if you keep it at this place where it is properly arranged you can pick it up what are all required there that alone you can take it to the machine right that will help basically to time saving during a problem diagnosing also right so my next thing is basically which uh, talks about uh, uh, which which you talk about if you look at it and uh, uh, the even the housekeeping items, right? How to arrange the buckets, how to keep the broomstick, all of the things. It is it can, this also can be properly systemized and systemized uh, set the limits and uh, systemize it. And when you come to the office area, how to arrange our drawers properly, right? This is a very good example. You can see that you need not struggle when you work at your workplace or in your desk, place, right? So that it's easily retrievable. You can work and put it back so that you can save a lot of time by following this second principle if you look at it right so and uh, what are the benefits of uh, setting the limits and systemizing it basically on a shop floor it helps on improving the safety part when you look at the gangway the gangways are properly marked so that people it clears a clear decor may uh, say the uh, marking on the floor which helps the person to where he has to walk where he should not walk where the vehicle movement will happen where the vehicle movement will not happen, where the people has to work, where the people cannot work. It is properly, clearly identified on the shop floor when you looked at that photograph there, right? And 
obviously all these things sorting out and setting a limits and systemize which basically helps in improving the quality of the shop say the product what is manufactured on the shop floor and when you have properly arranged sorting out and if you are setting the limits the inventory also at the shop floor will come down because you have seen the motor how it is arranged right so you're going to dump a motor on the shop floor right you can have a dedicated container what is required for the production only will get into the language so that is a systematic way it can be done and basically the entire thing helps on the lead time reduction also there is a good discipline on the shop floor will happen right so the third is what is the third is it is basically how to shine the place right it is very very important right it is basically when you have a machine how to refurbish the machine clean it properly and paint it properly so that it looks good right same way on the gangway marking properly mark it and if there is a table how to clean it properly and paint it properly this is a continuous improvement right so this basically helps in uh, revising the product or process and it will actually help for the machine to end the life cycle right if it is properly cleaned and lubricated and uh, oiled and painted properly then the life of the machine also helps a bigger way right and how this shining can help this shining can help is basically to the audits what we do the correction and the prevention right that is what it talks about right so this is basically refurbishment of uh, any machines or old files removing it and uh, these are the examples right maybe uh, if you have a uniform proper uniforms and shoes that is also one of the ways of shining the uh, sh shining the uh, equipment we call it as shining the equipment on the shop floor but it helps on every area on this aspect and uh, reconditioning of the machine is one of the shining aspect because once you do the reconditioning and uh, if you keep the entire uh, machine spick and span and properly maintain that actually helps a lot right and uh, the next part is a refilling of oil because the oil has to be filled on time that will help basically to make sure that the machine is properly lubricated right so these are some of the examples we can talk about it and you can see on the uh, photo you can see a very clean machine properly uh, clean and properly painted it looks a good feel on the shop floor always and when you see on the other side you can see a washing area how it is properly neat and clean right the wash basins and the floors and everything has been maintained right the shining is the very important aspect uh, japanese always believe that that is the only reason if you go to any to a japanese shop floor you can see that they literally practice the all the principles on the shop floor right and uh, when you talk about uh, shine what benefit you will get it the benefit what we get it first is uh, it actually helps for the preventive measure because once we clean it and keep it everything neat and especially on the machines it actually helps to improve the breakdowns on the machine because machines are properly cleaned and properly lubricated properly greased and properly painted that actually helps a lot which in turn actually helps in reducing the downtime on the shop floor right so more the uptime the it helps the organization in multiple ways one is on productivity and second one is avoid loss of time which is actually helps in delivering the product or delivering the say part or whatever it is on time to the customer and it basically comes out with the right quality of the process right so it basically helps on these are the directions and productivity obviously we talked about it right so these are the benefits of the third years what is the fourth years basically to avoid elimination of searching right so when you talk about if you have a proper uh, if you have a storage where is the storage is a very transparent it is very easy to look at the components in the stores or in the shop floor very easily where either today's world everything is coming through the barcodings and uh, uh, we are talking about the uh, industry for talks about lot of things right where you have a uh, qr codes and other things where we have augmented reality there are so many new things are coming in terms of uh, how to have the avoid the search trick right? that is what it that is the way the world is moving now and uh, we have a lot of uh, well established visual controls also there in today's world right a lot of visual controls are there hand on is one of the controls and where you can see the color lights will be there when the green is there it is working orange is about to go 
and the red is totally down. So these are the ways the visual controls are there, markings, right? So these things will help basically the other part is the setup time reduction. Basically, how to reduce the change over time, right? That is very, very important, right? If I have a proper way of doing it, which we can talk it in the further model where we talk about single minute exchange of dice, where we are talking about it. And five years is the basic principle for that, right? Where how to avoid the elimination of uh, time lapse there, right? And uh, during the tool change time reduction also, those are the ways we can do it, right? So these are the examples. If you look at it, the filing rack, if it is properly arranged, we can avoid the time lapse there. And if you look at the tools, this is called the uh, shadow box on the shop floor, right? Which is a very, very wonderful phenomenon on the shop floor. It is followed because it is properly arranged and the technical the technician on the shop floor will know uh, whether if I take a spanner, whether the spanner has been put it in place or not. And that is a visual control, biggest visual control. This is also the other biggest control, visual control. You can see it on this photograph. You can see the fixtures are properly arranged and properly kept and properly identified. And it has got a place for everything there. So this is one of the ways to avoid time delays on the shop floor. And the other example also, the shop floor is properly arranged there if you look at it. So this is the other example, right? And uh, if you look at it, what is the benefit of uh, search time? Because it actually, you need not run around to find the part, what is required there, either a part or either a tool or anything to, uh, to make sure that uh, when you have in the flow, you not run around that, right? Most of the time what we do at home also is the same thing, right? So when you, when you want to do something at home as a mechanical engineer, I used to, so sometimes, many of the times, where is a screwdriver? Where is a cutting player, right? If I, if I know that I am storing at this place, it becomes easier for me for the emergencies at home also, right? It becomes easier or for any leaks in the house, normally as a family person, uh, sometimes the water leak comes. So it is required certain tools. I can keep it so that I can do it or I have to call the plumber immediately, right? Either one of these will happen, right? So this helps on search time reduction. And whatever is there on the shop floor, it helps on reducing the time on the shop floor where you can actually increase the productivity, the cost reduction, and basically finally into the non-valued activity, reduction in the non-valued activity, right? So what is this fifth years? Fifth years is basically following all the four years, standardizing all the four years practices is the fifth years, right? So basically it talks about what once you do one is sort and then set a limit and systemize, then once you start doing the third years and let's do the fourth years where you uh, avoid the time delay and uh, fifth years is what, how to follow all these four principles in a proper way, right? Through a continuous audit and uh, if there is something standards has to be revised in the, all the four areas, four pillars of uh, say five years, right? So where you can revise the standard and you have to make a proper documentation and you have to maintain it because that only will give a feel about and giving a score also for that area, right? We normally have a score, right? Maybe and all the five pillars, right? Uh, how much, if you look at it, we, at a, at a, let us take a scale of uh, 100, how much we are able to score, right? The area which uh, when you started, it may start with maybe 30 or 20 or 35 or 40. The goal is to reach 90 plus on any shop floor, right? How to score 90 plus or 95 plus to the best, right? So that's where you can see whatever the photograph I showed. Those are the shop floors where you can see the practices are uh, continuously done and uh, audits are continuously done. And there is a lot of training will be given on the five years principle also because uh, it is not easy to do it. It takes time. It looks very simple, but unless the practice happens on a day-to-day -day basis only, the entire five years principles will be followed. That's where it can transform into a, a wonderful shop floor there. And uh, so these are the examples of uh, what is to be standard practice and disciplines to be followed. If you look at it on the uh, shop floor, the operation standards, when you go to the shop floor where the working area is there, can see operation standard that is one of the standard set for the as a part of the five years and limit samples when you work on the table what is good what is not good there should be two limit samples setting in that area so that is other example if you look at it right 
So these are some of the examples which is uh, listed down on the uh, set standard. You can see it on that, especially on, uh, I was talking about Domino's last time, right? So if you go to any Domino's uh, say place, they will have a recipe standard, right? What is to be done? The guy flips it and do as per that, right? And when you have a function at a shop floor, especially for a sports day or founders day, they call it the person who founded the factory, right? So they, they create a manual also. That's also one of the standard practices, right? So those are the ways you can create the things, right? So basically what it helps, the standard, set standards, practice and discipline will help basically in standardizing the forest practices, all the forests, how to standardize it and continuous audit and uh, training of uh, people and uh, abolishing all unwanted standards. If it is something which is not required, it is better to remove it. So those are the things it can be done, right? So I have done and uh, if you have questions, I can answer for the questions and uh, and I hope, I think uh, this is a very simple principle, but uh, it is not easy as for me because uh, it takes a lot of uh, effort to practice a uh, five years on the shop floor and uh, uh, the person who is actually want to do a uh, five years on the shop floor, let's say, uh, I used to, when I used to work with the manufacturing line and uh, um, I take it as a challenge because it requires a lot of patience towards practicing all the five years on the shop floor. And one is that uh, the person who is driving it, you should be, you should be completely convinced that yes, this will actually is going to help the shop floor to start a lean journey or to start a TPM journey or to start a TQM journey, right? So that confidence should be there with the person who is driving it and the person's responsibility on driving these principles on the shop floor is very important because the people in the team has to know why this has to be done. So that is where the training plays a bigger role there. So we normally give a, uh, say, a uh, say a training, classroom training for five years first to people to understand and today you people are seeing the same thing what is the bias theoretically you are seeing it right today and you are understanding it i hope that the session is very useful for each and every each and every one of you and it i am adding value to people to understand uh, um, the, uh, about the fires principles right so i am sure that okay uh, this you can start after looking at this principles today Definitely, you can go back and start trying at your home first, right? That is the starting point because today you are at home and everybody is doing online classes as a student and today and everybody is learning from home only. You can go back to your work desk and look at what is this five years, right? There. And you can start looking at, can I do that at my study table first? Can I do it at my home where I used to? Uh, sit in the living room. Can I do it at my kitchen where I can help my mother to make her to be very effective in the kitchen every day, right? And can I go back to my bedroom how to arrange the things using this fire principle? So this is the only opportunity for each one of you today as a student. You can go and practice it because as I keep telling about in every session, knowledge is important. But unless the knowledge is practiced by us on every day and with a discipline, that only can transform the entire place in the aspect of five years, which is the foundation for any manufacturing excellence journey, especially TQM or TPM or lean journey. This is the basic foundation to be set, right? So uh, I hope uh, the session will, is definitely useful for each of you. And uh, uh, with this, uh, actually, I have uh, uh, done the session. And uh, now it is a time for the question and answer session. And uh, if you have any questions, you can start uh, putting it in the chat box so that I can start answering to that one by one. And uh, thank you.